This is an example of process costing using the weighted average method. <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is to work out the physical units. And this is all comes from the data in this section of the question. So the work in process at the 1st of July is 10,000 units. The units started in July is 100,000 units. So the total units we account for are 110,000 units. So the units completed and transferred to finished goods, we've got 80,000 units. So we know that all up, we've got 110,000 units to account for in the month of July. If we've completed and transferred out 80, then the difference between the total and the 80 must be our closing work in process. What we also need to do is to understand how complete these, thing, these units are with respect to conversion. Now the work in process at the beginning was 20% complete. Units completed and transferred out, obviously 100% complete. And the work in process at the 31st of July is 33% complete. So now we can see what our equivalent units are with respect to direct materials and conversion. And remember, conversion is a combination of the labour and the overhead. Now, obviously, units completed and transferred out are fully complete with respect to materials and conversion costs. In this question, all the material is added at the beginning. So the equivalent units with respect to direct materials is 30,000. But the equivalent units with respect to conversion costs is 33 and a third percent times 30,000. And we've got 10,000. So we've got a total here of 110 and a total here of 90. Okay, so now we need to calculate the unit cost. We know that the work in process at the beginning of the month was a total of 28,500. And this is made up of direct materials of 22,000 and conversion costs of 6,500. Costs incurred in July were a total of 356,400, which is made up of direct materials for 198 and conversion costs of 158,400. So we can So we can add these together to get our total costs to account for. OK, so now we can work out the cost per equivalent unit. So for the direct materials, it's simply going to be the 220,000 divided by the 110. So that's $2 a unit. And for the uh, 
and for the conversion costs it's going to be 164 divided by 90 which is a dollar 83 so we add these two together so remember you add from the direct materials and the conversion you don't use this total costs to account for figure So now we need to work out what were the costs of goods. So the total cost of goods completed and transferred out is the 80,000 times 383. So that's got what's gone to finished goods. So what's in work in process? So we know that there were 30,000 units in work in process multiplied by $2 gives us 60,000 and we know with the conversion costs There was thirty thousand times one eighty three. Oops, that's not correct, is it? It was ten thousand times one eighty three. because it was 10,000 because that was the equivalent completed units, 33% of 30,000. So the total cost of work in process was the 18,000 plus the 60,000, which gives us 78,322. So we've got the cost that's gone to our finished goods, of 306577 etc plus the 78322 which is oh sorry the cost of goods transferred out is the 306 plus the total of transferred to work in process which gives us a total of 384,900, which is the total that we had to account for.